Hi there and welcome to this crash course on data visualization with matplotlib. By the end of this session you will have gone through the following concepts. Um, you will have been able to understand the basic structure of creating a visualization using matplotlib. You will be able to plot a pie chart, a bar chart, a histogram, a line chart and a scatter plot while using um, matplotlib. So this session will also entail being able to work on challenges. So do expect that the learning methodology that we're going to be using will involve a bit of some theory as well as some examples. The prerequisites for this course um, are Python basics for data science crash course as well as the data wrangling with Py Python crash course, which have also been linked and can be found on this um, have also been linked so upon which once you have gone through this particular course you could always go through the data analysis with python crash course or you could also um, go through other crash courses on um, using data visualization tools it could be data um, visualization using seaborn or plotly or even um, using um, interactive um, environments or such as um, Power BI or Tableau. So yeah, so let's get started um, with this um, session. So for this particular session, we are going to be going through a notebook. A notebook simply is a document that data scientists usually use to share information with other data scientists. Um, this particular notebook um, has its link within the description section of the introduction video so be sure to um, click on that link and it should get you to um, a page that looks like this the kind of notebook so there are different kinds of notebook environments but the one that we're going to be using is google collaboratory and it's provided by google and the idea is that you're going to be running your code on the cloud so you're going to be running code on Google's servers as opposed to um, running code on your local machine. The first thing that you do once you have opened this particular page, you need to cre create a copy. So you go to file, then save a copy in Drive, and this should open a new copy in a new tab. So once you do that, you should be able to edit the copy that you have, been, um, you have created. And you could make changes to those that particular copy, um, of course, for learning purposes. All right. So once you have that open, um, you can be able to connect. So on the right hand side, click on connect to connect your notebook to um, a server that's going to be running our Python code. So as that is happening, I'll just um, give you a brief introduction on matplotlib then we can be able to continue to the other concepts um, that we have for this session so matplotlib is a library um, you could think of a library as a chunk of code that has been tested and has been used by other data scientists um, and um, it's that library or that chunk of code is available for people to use it with a specific purpose. The library that we are using is called matplotlib and its specific purpose is to create um, data visualization using the Python programming language. What's provided at the core uh, when it comes to programming languages may not necessarily include all the tools that you need to solve a particular problem, hence the reason for having libraries. So matplotlib is um, the most basic, uh, it's the basic library, um, visualization library that you can use when it comes to creating data visualizations using Python, um, the Python programming language. There are of course other different libraries with a specific purpose in mind um, when it comes to visualization using Python. There is Seaborn, which gives you some more um, functionalities when it comes to creating visualizations. For example, you might be able to create other visualizations that are 
crucial when it comes to understanding relationships between data using Seaborn. There's also Plotly, which is also another library, Python library, that's also used to create interactive dashboards. There is um, D3.js, which is used um, for creating data visualizations for, um, for um, web applications. So there are many libraries, but at the core of data science, when it comes to using the Python programming language, we normally use matplotlib. So yeah, so that's a bit about it. Um, but in terms of of um, uh, advantages of our other um, libraries, um, as mentioned, matplotlib is the most basic library when it comes to creating data visualizations. Um, um, a, other libraries such as Seaborn are actually based on uh, matplotlib. You could think of um, Seaborn being an enhanced library or a library that contains um, more functionalities, but at the core, it uses simply matplotlib um, code. And um, yeah, so matplotlib is the most basic form of library um, when it comes to data visualization with Python, and you should be in a position to be able to create um, just basic data visualization, um, um, yeah, basic data visualizations. Right, so once we do that, the first thing that we're going to do, once we have our environment ready, we're going to install install our, well, import our prerequisites of which are the libraries that we're going to need for our, our session. So unnest the sections. So the first section, we are going to run this code and it's going to import matplotlib.pyplot. So within the matplotlib library, there is the pyplot submodule where the core functionalities of plotting um, using matplotlib lie and we are going to be importing that submodule um, as plt. In any place that we um, use plt, we are actually going to be referencing matplotlib.pyplot. The next thing we are going to do is import numpy. Um, numpy is a library for performing scientific computations. I normally give this example of say if you wanted to do an average of say 100 numbers, you would need to add each and every number and then divide by the numbers um, that you have in mind. That gives you um, the average. Um, and and if, if it comes to writing code, you yourself, you'd have to write um, code that iterates through such kinds of a sequence, such kind of a sequence. However, NumPy just gives you functions which allow you to be able to just give a function, like it gives you an, an average function, you just give that function um, the list of numbers and it gives you back um, an average. So it gives you um, a whole lot of scientific computations um, and functions to work with. So the third library that we're going to be working with is Pandas. It's quite common for performing data um, analysis. Um, the reason is because it helps you to be able to manipulate your data. So you would um, source for data from, um, say, a CSV file or an Excel file or whatever file, and then you would store it in what is referred to as, as, as a data frame, which... Um, is 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 what is it's a data data structure uh, provided by pandas and it allows you to be able to work with um, data in a tabular format so those are the three libraries that we're going to be working with so let's run this particular code um, cell by simply click, clicking on the top left um, um, run cell um, button or you could always just use a shortcut a shortcut which is command enter all right, so once that has imported, so once you click on it once, it's going to just import um, the libraries. Um, so once that has happened, we will start now with now the basic structure, understanding how do you, what, what approach um, can you use to be able to create a visualization using uh, matplotlib. So there are two methods. The first method um, that we're going to learn um, is one that we're going to be using throughout this crash course. And this involves, first of all, being able to define your data set. So here we have two Python lists. The first list contains um, um, elements um, which represent age. Um, the second one um, contains um, elements which, which, 
which contain uh, or which represent um, data analyst salary. So we would first of all define um, our data sets, um, which are the two data sets that we're going to be working with to, to plot um, um, a visualization. Then we can define the size of our plot um, within our notebook environment by simply um, referencing um, matplotlib Sorry about that. Let me just save that one. So um, by just referencing PL, um, matplotlib, um, which is plt dot um, figure function that's going to help us be able to define the figure. Figure is just the space where you're going to be um, showing your plot. So um, let me just close that. Um, so um, here we're saying on the x-axis we want our plot to have six dimensions and on the y-axis we have wanted to have five. We'll get to see sometimes you can play around with those those dimensions as you see fit. We then render our plot, then we just use matplot, we reference matplotlib.plot and use this is the plot plot function. And this plot function takes in a set of parameters, there's age, there's data analyst salary. So these are the two data sets that we defined at the very top. Then the color of our um, line plot. This plot um, function um, um, helps us to create a, a line plot. So we're going to see that our line um, will have this color blue. And then our label um, for our line will be um, DA salary. We then add a title to our chart using the title function, which takes in um, this, this parameter. The first one is just a string, which is the title of our chart. And the second parameter is a dictionary that defines um, the styles or, yes, the styles for um, the title. And you can be able to um, walk around with just a number of um, different um, styles you just have to look at the documentation for that um, then we add an x axis label um, employees age and a y axis label which is salary and add a legend and then display our plot if we run this we should be able to see a line plot um, with the mentioned um, information so as you can see we have our line plot here on the x-axis here, we have employee age. Then on the y-axis, we have salary. And we have a, our line, um, which has been plotted. All right. So that's just a basic structure of how we can be able to create a plot. The first thing, we define our data sets. We can set the plot size, then render our plot. Then again, over here, we actually... Um, add some um, information or we tweak our our plot or um, and and as a result and lastly we just display the plot all right now if we wanted to have two data sets um, other than just um, da salary we also wanted to um, compare da salary with also say data scientist ds sal salary so just some more information here is that if you look at the two lists that we have here, they actually represent records. So the first element, say 25, represents a record with um, age 25 and um, salary, DA salary, 38,496. Again, but we're now introducing another, say, column um, within that record that has DA salary of 45,372. So we can now introduce this particular data set and compare the two. And how we would do that is it's just you, through the use of the same format that we have used. So um, we define our data set, set our plot size. Then here we would use another line of code to additionally include um, this other plot where we have DS salary also being plotted within the same figure. Oh, yes, within the same figure. So within the same visualization, we should be able to see another line, um, line plot um, that will be red in color and with this label. 
the A salary is what we had and now we're going to have two lines within our plot and here we are just styling our plot the legend is what we see um, within our graph say on the top left um, on, in the previous graph we had seen it's DA salary but we will have to, we will see that we have data analyst salary as, as well as data scientist salary so if I run this I will be able to see that I have now two um, two lines within my chart all right all right so um, just in terms of um, notes on how you, on the other functions that you can be able to use when it comes to rendering um, plots there's a plot um, for line chart you use a plot um, function um, which takes in um, at at minimum um, two parameters x and y x is the x data set so our x here was age and y was um, da salary as well as ds salary then we can take a pie when we are plotting a pie chart we can use the pie function and give it a data set z same case with a bar plot um, for a bar plot we can use um, the bar function um, same case with histogram, hist function, scatter plot, scatter function, as well as box plot. We're going to cover a few of these, but not all of them. Um, for um, those particular, um, for those particular, um, I would say um, other um, functions that we are not going to be using in this particular um, session you can access um, there actually there's actually a separate full course on data visualization with matplotlib that you can be able to do um, and that will also be found within the description section so be sure to have a look at both of uh, also that course just in case you'd want to um, have an idea on how to go about the um, other plots um, and also, if you want some challenges, this is a crash course. Um, it's basically free, but we have in that other full course, you'll find that there are um, also challenges for each and every section. All right. So the second method that we can use um, when, when it comes to plotting is simply understanding the following um, approach. Assuming that we are creating a visualization, we would then have within our visualization what is a figure. Actually, we've been using this um, method. It's only that we haven't really um, brought it out um, um, clearly. But nonetheless, this method entails having a figure um, as the container that um, contains now the plot that we create. Within the figure, we have an axis. So the figure, the figure is just actually an object in data science, and um, we usually um, call this is, is an, we usually call it an object. And within the figure object, you have axis, an axis object. So you can have multiple axis objects within one figure object. So within the axis object, we have the y um, and x axis and also now our plot. So the idea here is that we are going to first of all be defining our data set. Then we are going to be now also defining the figure axis as well as uh, the figure object as well as the axis object. So the figure object is used for managing a figure level attribute. Maybe you wanted to have a title for the entire um, collection of visualizations. Um, we would um, define that within our um, define that by referencing the figure object. Um, the same case, axis um, um, or plot level changes or um, attributes would be managed um, by simply referencing the axis object. Once we do that, we can be able to render our plot just using the same method of using the plot function and then displaying the plot. Here we're using figure.show and here we are using plot.show. PLT.show. So if I run this, I should be able to see a similar visualization like the one that we had created before, only that we don't have the X and Y axis title, but you could also be able to 
um, add those ones um, if, um, yes using those other functions that we used before but now um, again here we don't have any um, yes, yes so yeah so you could also say add another data set um, as shown so we have this other data set DS salary we define our figure and access objects then we render the plots by simply um, um, referencing the axis um, object so we also did the same here by um, referencing the axis object then once we do that we use the plot function the, um, give it the parameters that we need um, the um, age and DS salary same case with age and DA salary um, as well as the other two attributes uh, two um, parameters then we can define our we style our um our um individual axis um object um through the use of these other functions as you, that you can see here so one that once that is done we can be able to show this the plot and display it but this will have the plot will have just um another line within one particular chart as you can see here all right so um so yeah we can continue to the next section so if you wanted to add a second data set for just comparison um but at the same time we would want to say um have it in a different plot so we've mentioned that or in a different axis so we have one axis here but we would want to have another axis on the right side and have um, say the DS salary that's the red line be shown there then we can use this method where we define two axis objects um, uh, and um, of course here we would also use some parameters for defining um, our subplot so our subplot is now that's you know just the axis so um, in our case we would want one um, uh, we would want a figure um, with one row and two columns so this is um, um, one row um, the previous um, so so in the previous in the previous um, um, example where we've outputted employee salary in USD we actually had one row and one column but we would want to have one uh, a figure object with one row and two columns then we define the size of our um, our axis objects well not really our axis objects but our figure size then again we render the plots by simply referencing the axis that we would want to plot our our visualization to or our, our line graph to so in our case for the first um, axis oops for the first axis we would want to plot um, age um, and DA salary then um, for the second axis we would want to plot age and DS salary all right um, so once we do that we can add a title to both both um, axis then um, X axis label Y axis label and a legend and a grid and we can be able to show um, by the way the grid is what you can see inside um, which has just lines within our graph so if I run this I should be able to see um, our, our figure which has now two different plots um, two different axes all right um, the reason why we learned these two methods is because especially um, when you're doing your research you might find implementations being done in either methods and it would be important for you to fully understand what's happening um, when it comes to um, creating plots using matplotlib and it makes your um, work a way lot easier all right now let's go into now creating different um, plots using matplotlib the first type of plot that we're going to be creating is the pie chart and this is a type of visualization that shows the proportions or percentages between categories by simply dividing a circle into different segments we're going to go through a few examples actually two um, and we're going to be using the following approach um, in um, solving in, in coming up with now our visualizations 
We're going to be preparing. We're going to go in, we're going to go through the preparation stage, the rendering stage, the tweak and label stage, and the display stage. Um, if you look at this code closely, you will realize that we are actually using the first method that we learned. Um, we're not defining any figure or um, um, defining any axis um, um, per se in our code. Um, we use, and and we're just simply using the method that um, we had we have just gone through. So the first thing that we do is define our data sets. So quantity data set will have the following elements. Fruits um, data set will have the following elements and as well as the colors um, data set which will have the following elements. So the colors data set represents the color of our pie chart. So quantity is, um, so if you are to look at, if you wanted to interpret this data set in a better way, you could say that, um, so before we even do that, we have this question, create a pie chart that describes um, fruits quantity in a basket. So it means that um, there are 35 bananas and these have, will be represented with a blue color within the pie chart. There are um, 27, 25 coconuts, which will be represented by this um, color code, um, to hex code. When it comes to programming, you represent colors in hex codes um, um, within our pie chart. The same case, there are 25 grapes, which will be represented by this color. Um, same case with apples, 15 apples, which will, will be represented by the use of that color. All right, so once we have defined our data sets, we can now be able to render our plot. Um, here we define the size of our chart um, uh, or figure um, um, and and we say that we, this is the x and this is the y um, um, in terms of, um, of dimensions then our plot um, we use the pi function as mentioned before and use the quantity data set uh, which you can see we had defined earlier then labels um, of our our sections will be the fruits so each and every um, section will be labeled um, with the fruits data set um, or data set yeah which is that one then colors same case um, each and every section will be um, um, def will also be defined by those um, def um, already um, defined colors or the colors that we had earlier um, defined and we then be um, also uh, use this auto PCT um, parameter to define that we would want to um, have our our pie chart have um, either zero or um, no percentage so so we would actually be defining the decimal point format or the number format that you would want to have for our percentages in our case we only want one decimal Point, so we would use a zero um, and then we explode so um, in our case we when we use the explode function um, parameter we are actually defining um, which um, we are actually defining how far each section should be away from the whole so if you have a pie chart with five different sections you might want to um, emphasize put emphasis on one section by simply um, um, taking that section a bit far away from the rest. We'll come to see that. Then later we tweak and label our pie chart um, and display our plot. So if we run this, we should be able to get a pie chart. So actually here, oh, I see. So here the auto percent is zero, which actually means that we um, do not want any um, decimal point. If we put one, uh, yes, if, just to correct um, something on that, if you put one, um, we should be able to see that we have one decimal point um, um, uh, within our our percentages. Um, and when it comes to explode, you can see that um, the second element, which is coconuts, um, has been exploded. Um, it's it's um, there's some emphasis that has been put in the pie chart on that section by simply having that section um, away from the rest of the sections or the rest of the pie chart. 
Right, so that's how you can be able to create a pie chart. Let's see how we can be able to create a pie chart from now a um, data set that's stored in a tabular form. Here we just defined a data set. Um, we used um, data, <laughs> data that was stored in um, a list. All right, so in our case, um, we might want to um, say, describe the distribution of Olympic gold medal um, medals. Um, um, and the data would be stored in Olympics data set. So if I were to so access this data set, I would use pandas, PD um, represents pandas, then I would use the read CSV function provided by pandas um, and um, pass it pass this URL. Um, then um, once I retrieve the data, I would store it in this particular variable df and immediately of course um, in pandas you'd refer to that as a data frame and then I would a uh, reference I would get the country column and store it in this particular variable I um, mean um, and it would store all our countries the same case um, I would um, same uh, on this other end I would also do the same I would get the gold medal records um, or values um, so of values within the gold medal um, column and I would store um, those values in gold medals and then I would define our explode um, 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 parameter values. We actually used this, this, this value over here but we could also define it outside um, and, and then later so once that, that is done so if I were to preview let me just preview this data set quickly um, for you to be able to see um, so I use the dot head um, to just be able to preview the data sets um, the first five records so you can see this is how our data set looks like okay um, so once that is done so I can be able to define the figure size by doing that and then here being able to plot a pie chart uh, by simply using the gold medals um, um, values which I have extracted um, and had, had extracted and stored in our gold medals variable same case labels um, or I would want the labels to be the values that I extracted from the DF country um, column I explode um, this pie chart using the defined um, values here um, and I would also want to I might also want to let's say t uh, rotate the pie chart um, so that when it's presented I have um, a starting angle of 120 um, degrees and also I pass um, the auto PCT um, parameter that will define that we do not want to have any decimal points within our um, percentage values. I would then tweak and label the chart and also display it. So if I run this, I should be able to see that I have a pie chart which um, gives us just some distribution of gold medal, um, how gold medals have been distributed um, within say the Olympics. So we have United States with, with a lot more but really this isn't really a distribution it should um, it's a whole definition but we'll go through distributions in histograms um, all right so that's a bit on how you create gold um, um, pie charts when it comes to um, data something to note pie charts when it comes to creating pie charts uh, uh, if you wanted to use a library like Mat, um, but like Seaborn, which is the other Python data visualization library, there is no functionality for creating pie charts, so you'd have to use Matplotlib for that. Okay, bar chart. So a bar chart is a type of visualization that presents categorical data with rectangular values, um, or with rectangular bars with heights and the lengths proportional to the values that they represent. In our case, we are going to be plotting a bar chart from um, some defined data sets. So 
we're going to be creating two types of vertic um, charts, bar charts. So there's vertical and horizontal bar chart. So for this first example, we're going to create a vertical and a horizontal bar chart that describes the distributions, um, the distribution of cakes for a bakery. So um, here we have defined our two data sets. Uh, um, we would say that marble cakes, there, um, there were 9,000 marble cakes which were sold, um, 700 apple cakes which were sold, um, 400 grape cakes which were sold, etc. etc. Et so um, then we would create a vertical bar chart and um, this we would be able to do that by simply using the bar function. Then after doing that, we would pass the cakes data set that we would want to use um, and um, in terms of categories. Then we would define the height of our bars. When it comes to creating a vertical bar chart, we are actually going to be using the height. When it comes to horizontal bar chart, we use a parameter, um, which is width, because the bars are going to be in vertical bar charts, uh, in, in, in a vertical bar chart, the bars within our graph are going to be running from, um, coming from the bottom to top, but in a um, horizontal bar charts usually come from the left, which is the y-axis and um, going to the right. But here we're using the height um, parameter and then we define how the color of our bar, of our bars. Then um, we define how we would want to style our bar um, um, the X sticks would sh um, actually be what we would want to style and to have some rotation of 45. X sticks here would represent the categories um, within our X axis, which are marble cakes, will be um, rotated at a 45 degrees uh, angle, angle, and then we show. So if we run this, we should be able to see that we have a visualization which we started, um, we wanted to create. So you can see we have our bar chart, which is here. Sales, then the marble cakes, um, apple cakes, grape cakes, yeah. So I think that gives us an idea of what's happening. Okay, so if we wanted to render a horizontal bar chart, we can simply do so by um, use of bar h. Bar h is the function that allows us to be able to create a um, horizontal bar chart. So we give our bar h um, function, the cakes um, data set, um, which, which the cakes is still the categories of cakes that we have. Then the width, um, the width here would be, the width would be now the sales. So the sales here, as mentioned here, we used height, um, but now we want, uh, we're defining a horizontal bar chart, so we, equate our um, our width to sales, then our define our color of our bars to be pink, then we um, define our styles, then later show the graph. All right, so um, yeah, so that's, that's a bit about being able to create a bar chart. But now, here we just used simply two lists. Um, but this gives you an example. If you wanted to create a, a particular um, bar chart, you would now need to know that at the basic form, you're actually going to be working with lists. Um, yeah, so let's now work with now a data set or data frame. So as we are going to create a bar graph for um, a summary table um, using the following data set. So let's read our data set, import it and read it and just show. Um, and we would want to, so assuming this is our data set, we can create a summary table um, that gives us the days and also the total bill um, for those particular days. So we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Thursday and we have the total bill and assuming that we wanted to plot this on a bar chart, we would um, get the um, the columns, uh, each individual columns, and then store them in a, uh, a, a variable. So the values that we have here would actually be stored here in list form. The same case here, the values would also be stored in total 
bill. Then we can render our our plot by simply using the bar chart bar function and pass it um, the days um, days will represent um, the categories uh, um, values and also height um, because we are creating a vertical chart bar chart we use the height um, parameter total bill will be the list that will be containing our values um, total bill values then the color light blue then we tweak and label our chart and display our plot. All right, so there we have it. All right, so just to stop here, oh well, I'll, I'll just pausing here for a bit just to mention that if you would want to practice the concepts that we are learning, there is a full course. Be sure to um, see that particular full course. Um, well, you can always go to that full course, sign up for that course um, and be able to work on challenges as well as a project at the very end, a real life project with also some sample solutions for both the project and the challenges. That way you're able to practice and get to learn more as you walk through the, um, the, the session um, or the, the course. All right, histograms. So a histogram is a type of visualization that, of course, um, it shows the distribution of data over a continuous interval or time period. Um, in our example, we are going to create a frequency distribution of the following data set. So we had the height data set, which is just a list that contains um, data with, um, that um, represents heights, um, various heights that have been um, measured. And we are going to be creating a histogram that shows the frequency distribution. So um, once we have defined our height data set, we can also des um, des um, describe or define our beams, which um, would um, help us to, say, um, categorize each and every um, data um, element that we have here. So from 150 to 155, we'd actually be um, plotting or so say how many of let's say these records are between 150 and 55 um, um, and that is actually what we are going to be plotting the frequency distribution so this help us helps us to be able to um, um, define the bins um, within our histogram we then render our histogram through the use of the hist um, um, function and and pass it our height data set and our beans um, parameter you don't necessarily have to define the beans parameter but um, you could always do that um, um, whenever you'd want and um, normally it's it's standard to use just 10 beans but you could always be able to um, use find an optimal number by simply um, finding the square root of the number of say um, um, values that you elements that you have all right so once we do that we can tweak and label our plot and then display it so if I run that I should be able to have a plot um, a frequency distribution plot. So as you can see here we have this one is skewed to the right um, um, it's not really much more of a normal distribution. It's closer, but not really. It's a bit skewed to the right because we, our tail is on the right-hand side. Okay. Uh -huh. So if you wanted to plot a histogram from a data set, um, we can be able to... Um, first, of, first of all, what we do is just you know, um, read our data set by preparing how the data set that we're going to be working with. So we get, we prepare our list um, of values that we're going to be using. Um, so first of all, we import our data set. And there we go. So this is a data set that contains just information about players in uh, a FIFA uh, video game. Um, so football game. And we would want to display the frequency distribution of the overall variable. So this is the variable of interest. So we'd want to see um, the frequency distribution of that. And once we read our data set, 
we can be able to pull those values, um, extract those values from that column by simply using this method, um, pandas uh, method, and we store those values in our overall um, variable. It's now going to be in a list form. Then we render our plot through the use of a hist um, function, passing the overall values as well as the bean values and um, then we style our chart and display it. So if I run this, I should be able to have a plot as shown, distribution of the overall variable. So you can see that a majority of our values lie between 60 and 7, is it 55? Is it, well, yeah, 55 and could even say, yeah, but majority is 60 to 75. All right, um, second last chart, so line chart. You can be able to create line charts or line graphs, you, you know, to, to display quantitative values of a continuous interval time period or time period. And this helps you to be able to understand trends, patterns, and also fluctuations um, within our data over that particular interval, continuous interval, or time period. So let's see how we can be able to create a line chart. Um, so we first of all say, assuming we are going to create a line graph or line chart to describe the trend of car sales during the year 2020, we have this these two particular data sets. Um, each say the the month's data set represents the month. So this is January, so Feb, uh, March, April, etc. And sales um, are as follows. So assuming that this is, you know, the data here is for 2020, we can be able to use the plot function to plot a line plot, uh, to create a line plot and pass it the two values. So the first value would be now the X, which is now the data set containing our, our um, continuous interval values. Um, and, and sales, which would represent now um, the um, say the data that we would have on the y-axis so if we um, so this is going to be able to create a plot that gives us now some sort of trend um, within for, for the car sales then we tweak and label then we display and plot so if I run this I should be able to see that we have now a line graph that helps us to see the trend for car sales during the year 2020 so the very beginning from um, January to February, um, um, the sales, um, car sales um, um, went high, um, they, they increased. Then again from January, um, they steadily, uh, well, they um, reduced to, um, to all the way to March, to April. And again, they continued to um, be at the same um, point around the same point until um, June then but this was still reducing the cast sales still reduced then in July they started to rise again until August um, where the rate of increase in terms of sales sort of again from then on um, reduced um, but at the same time um, um, the car sales did increase, only that the rate um, uh, of sales um, sort of went down. So that's just um, some our line plot that we can be able to create and interpret. Right, let's, so for here we had a list, <laughs> um, we had two lists, but then we can be able to create um, a, a line graph through the use of uh, a data set as shown. So we are going to to create a line graph to describe the trend of gas um, in the UK, USA, France um, since 1990. So this data set gives us some information about um, the trend of um, gas price. Um, and if you wanted to compare these three, UK, USA and France, we can be able to create a line um, graph um, just like the way we did in our first example. So First of all, we prepare a data set. Um, we have three data sets, four data sets that we're going to be using. So the first one is the years. Um, here we 
actually use the to list function to return a list of values from our first column. We could also do the same case with also these other ones, but it's okay because um, these other ones are going to be stored in the formats that we would want. Then here we are actually using, say, uh, we actually referencing gas um, df um, UK column are going to be values for, that will represent UK prices. Same case with gas df um, USA as well as France. Then we render our plots um, and and by simply first of all defining the size of our plot, then our we define the um, plot, the first plot that we're going to have is um, the UK prices one, then USA prices, then France prices. Of course, we, we also use what I refer to as markers to define um, the various points within our chart, our line graph, and also have a label. Then we style our 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 chart and 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 display our plot. So if I run this, I should be able to see um, our plot. All right. So you can see that we have our line graph of UK prices stroke gallon since 1990. All right, so our last um, chart, scatter plot. So scatter plots are usually a type of visualization um, um, which can be used to detect, if, to detect if there's a relationship between two um, um, variables and for this particular example, we are going to be creating a scatter plot um, between two different uh, variables. So, assuming that we had um, a data, two data sets X and Y. So, X data set X um, would represent variables from um, variables would represent X variable, and um, a data set Y would represent Y variable. Then we can plot as shown. So um, plt dot scatter, um, and uh, we use um, scatter uh, function to be able to plot our scatter um, um, plot. So x and y um, are the data sets that we're going to be using. Then we tweak and display our plot, so we should be able to see um, some a scatter plot that will help us understand whether there's a relationship between two variables. Now this is a scatter plot. And how you interpret is you need to is 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 so if I were to interpret this particular scatter plot, I would actually say that there's a positive um, correlation between the two variables. The reason is because you can be able to draw a horizontal, uh, not a horizontal, a diagonal line between the points. So you can draw a line between the points, and that means that say as vari values for x um, increase, values for y um, also increase. And hence, there is a strong positive correlation. And this, this usually varies. Um, um, however, scatter plot helps us to be able to visualize um, such relationships. If these points were scattered all over within our plot, and if we were to draw a point, it wouldn't really make sense. Um, there wouldn't be a sort of a linear relationship such that if values of one um, variable increase and the other um, increase, um, then in such a case we would say that we don't have a um, strong um, relationship um, between those two particular variables. The other methods that you're going to learn later when it comes to um, um, being able to determine um, the relationship, whether there's a relationship between um, two variables and um, um, if you would want to read a bit more you can look into correlation coefficients, um, um, person correlation coefficient when it comes to um, 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 understanding to um, the relationship between two variables. But here we can, because we can be able to draw a line um, between the points, a straight line, um, then we can say that the um, variables have strong positive correlation. So lastly, um, let's import a data set and determine whether the population and income variables are highly correlated. By, let's run this and
good we can see that we have a data set that contains the following information this is just basic demographic information about countries and our variables of interest are population and income so we would want to plot those two 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 data sets just like we did with with the lists so um, we define those two um, um, data sets um, then later we use this cutter function and pass population and income and then we style our chart and display our plot as shown so if I run this I should wait for it to load so here as you can see really we cannot be able to draw a diagonal straight line if we were to draw one um, really um, there wouldn't be any relationship between the two variables which means that as the population of a country increases um, the income does not necessarily increase um, therefore meaning that the two variables do not have a strong um, um, are not correlated in any in any way so being correlated means that you have that relation where values of one variable increase while the other um, values of another variable increase so in such a case we actually don't have um, any correlation so yeah um, overall we have been able to go through um, 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 different concepts when it comes to working with the matplotlib library and the idea is that you have been able to um, understand what happens when it comes to creating um, to creating um, various kinds of visualizations um, using the matplotlib um, library. So you might ask, what's um, next? So let's get to see um, um, what you where you actually move on from now. All right, so the next thing that you can do is to go through the full course that has been linked um, in the description section. And the idea is that you will get to go through more topics um, when it comes to creating other different types of um, visualizations. Um, there are box plots which are helpful in determining um, outliers within a data set um, and also other types of visualizations um, when it comes to creating um, them with matplotlib. Um, in addition, there are more examples that you might find within um, those particular that particular course, um, as well as so challenges. So each and every section has a challenge section, um, where you're going to be um, putting into practice what you have learned in the examples and in the challenge sections, in and you're also going to get. Um, um, some some solutions, some sample solutions um, that will help you see whether you are able to have achieved um, uh, what you were expected to have achieved with regards to the challenges. And lastly, when it comes to learning data science, um, you have to put your skills, the skills that you have learned in a um, real life project. So within that full course, you'll also find a project that you can be able to work on as well as get a sample solution that you can be able to compare notes and see what was expected with regards to that particular project. So um, if you are interested in learning more, be sure to follow this particular, um, this particular um, um, series of, 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 of crash courses um, on whatever platform, um, as well as also um, continue to learn through the use of the full course resources that have been provided. If you have any questions, be sure to um, join the Telegram group that we have um, also shared in the link um, section and ask any questions that you have. Um, and hopefully you will be able to get to a point where the skills that you have learned are going to be important within your line of work. So yeah, so that has been it for this crash course. Um, all the best and see you in the next crash course.